the frustrating thing about Kohaku's ending in the Hisui route, regardless of which one you pick, is that ultimately she's proven, she's not exactly proven correct in her ideology that she's just a doll. Because, like, either she dies or that version of her dies because her memory is erased. Um, and that's not exactly a very uplifting uh, message for, you know, real-life victims of the kind of thing that Kohaku went through. The way that she copes with that is to shut off her emotions entirely, and as as she describes, just become a doll. Um, technically, it's not really physically possible. Um, there are st uh, studies that show victims will dissociate from past memories, but an emotion is not like a spiritual thing that you that comes from your soul or whatever that you can just turn on or off. It's a chemical. So it's it's borderline supernatural for her to be able to do that essentially. Um it's not entirely impossible, but it's A it's it's not it's not realistic and B it's probably not a good message. Um for a character to be like, oh yeah, that's my solution to this horrible thing that happened. Um, and in that regards, her story is kind of unresolved. So it's good, I think, that we're that we're revisiting it. Hopefully, obviously, in the Kohaku route. Uh, so that having been said, it's time. <laughs> it's time. Oh my God, we're at the end. We're at the very, very end. I never thought we'd make... I, of course I knew we'd make, but it's... It's been a long... It's been a long ride. And, um... Yeah, I'm... Excited to finally finish it and get off. <laughs> um, I've enjoyed Tsukihime. I'm, I'm happy to finally finish it and be able to say that I've read Tsukihime. Um, but it is very long, and I want to be able to move on to other projects. So... Without further ado, I made a save just in case because it wasn't I wasn't entirely sure exactly how the save like how data works in this game. So I, I made a save just in case. That's just right, right, right at the beginning. Um like you said, but you're definitely right that humans can't just be literally emotionless. Yeah, it's just yeah. Um Okay. Here we go. The prologue. So, like I said last week, I'm just gonna read everything. I'm not gonna skip anything um, for this last route. When I came to, I was lying on a hospital bed. The curtain on the nearby window sways gently. It is a beautiful day outside, and the dry wind signals the end of summer. Hello, Tonoshiki-kun. Congratulations on your recovery. The unfamiliar old man extends his hand for a handshake. His square-rimmed glasses and warm smile are very befitting. His tidy-looking white clothes suit him perfectly, too. Can you understand what I'm saying, Shiki-kun? No. Why am I in a hospital? You don't remember, do you? You were involved in a car accident while we, uh, while you were walking. Your chest was stabbed by a shard of glass, and it was unlikely that you would survive. Very unbefitting of what a doctor would say. Yet he says it while still smiling cheerfully. Terrible. I feel terrible. I'm tired. Can I go to sleep? Yes, you should rest. You must focus on recuperating, and not push yourself. The doctor is still smiling. To be honest, I can't stand that smile anymore. Can I ask you something, doctor? What is it, Shiki-kun? Why are there scribbles all over your body? And there are cracks all over the walls. 
Why are there cracks in the walls? The smile vanishes for just a brief moment, and then returns to his face immediately. He turns and walks away. It seems there was some brain damage after all. Get a hold of Dr. Ashiya in neurology. I also suspect he may have suffered some damage to his eyes. Spend the afternoon examining his eyes. The doctor whispers to the nurse so that I won't hear him. Weird. There are scribbles all over everyone's bodies. The sloppy, zigzagging black lines running all over the floors, walls, and ceiling. I don't understand what they mean, but looking at them makes me feel sick. I wonder what it is. The bed, too, is covered in these scribbly lines. When I touch the line with my finger, my fingertip seeks, uh, excuse me, sinks down into the crack. Uh, oh! It seems as if I could reach farther down with something narrower. So I traced the line with a fruit knife that was lying beside the table. I didn't use any strength at all. Yet the knife sinks into the bed, all the way up to the hilt. It was fun, so I dragged the knife along the scribbly line. Thud! With a heavy sound, the bed snaps cleanly in two. <gasps> the girl in the bed next to mine screams. The nurses run over and take the knife away from me. How did you break the bed, Shikikun? The doctors don't ask why, but curiously persist on how I did it. I traced along that line and it broke. Hey, just what is this hot? What? Excuse me. Just why is this hospital full of cracks? You'd better stop it with that, Shikikun. There's no such cracks like that anywhere. Now tell me, just how did you break the bed? You can tell me. I promise I won't get mad. I'm telling you, all I did was just trace the line with the knife. I see. Okay, we'll continue this conversation tomorrow. The doctor leaves. In the end, not a single person believed my story. As long as I run the knife along the scribbles, I can cleanly cut anything. I don't have to put any force into it. It's as easy as cutting paper with scissors. The bed. The chair. The desk. The walls. The floor. I've never tried, but probably. No. Definitely even people. But it seems that no one else can see these lines. The black lines that only I can see. Despite being a kid, I gradually begin to understand what the lines were. They're probably like stitches. Just like stitches that hold an open wound together after surgery. I think they're weak spots. After all, there's no way I could cut such a thing with a child's strength alone. Yeah. I didn't know until now that the world is covered in these lines, these breaking lines that bind everything together. No one else can see them. That's why they're just fine. But I can see them. I'm scared. So scared I can't even talk. It's as if I'm the only one who went crazy. Maybe that's why. Why, even after two weeks, no one believes my story. Even after two weeks, no one has come to see me. Even after two weeks, I continue to live alone in a world surrounded by black stitches. I need to get out. I don't want to be in this room anymore. I don't want to stay in a place covered in stitches. That's why I decided to escape and run away to somewhere where no one else would be. 
but the wound on my chest still hurts, and I didn't get very far. That was when I noticed. I'm standing in the grassy field just outside of town. I really didn't get far at all. <coughs> my chest hurts, and I feel so sad. I collapse to my knees and cough. <coughs> There's nobody here. Drowning in this ocean of green at the end of summer. I feel like I'm about to disappear. But before that... Hey, you! It's dangerous to sit down in a place like that! I hear a woman's voice from behind me. Huh? What do you mean, uh... You're already a runt, so I can't see if you're, uh... Excuse me. You're already a runt, so I can't see you if you, uh... Fuck, this is... Give me a second. My straw fucking disintegrated because it's made of fucking paper. Hate this shit. <laughs> you're already a runt, so I can't see you if you're sitting in the grass. I was this close to kicking you, so watch out. She points at me rather grumpily. I get a little angry. After all, I sit in the fourth row from the front, so I don't think I'm that short. Kicked? By who? Isn't it obvious, stupid? You and I are the only ones here, so who else could it be but me? She declares this confidently as she folds her arms. Well, I suppose it must be fate that we met here. So you want to talk for a little while? My name is Aozaki Alko. What's yours? She extends her hand to me, with the kind of cheerfulness one would show an old friend. I see no reason to refuse, so I tell her my name is Tonoshiki, and grasp her cool hand in return. Talking to her was a lot of fun. She didn't ignore what I said just because I was a kid. Instead, she listened. She listened to what I had to say, like a friend. We talked about many, many things. About my family. About how it was an old and respected family with very strict, traditional rules, and my equally strict father. About my little sister, Akiha, quiet Akiha who would always follow me around. About our big mansion and the vast gardens, and how Akiha and I would play together with our friends. I told her about many things almost feverishly. Oh, it's this time already. Sorry, Shiki. I've got some business to take care of, so let's stop here. She gets up to leave. My chest tightens, and I feel sad, thinking that I would be alone again. See you tomorrow. I'll be waiting for you here, okay? You should go back to your room and listen to your doctor. Oh. She speaks with such ease in a natural way as she makes her way off. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow, we would be able to talk like we did today. I'm happy. It was the first time I truly felt something since I awoke from the accident. Since that day, going to that grassy field in the afternoons became part of my daily routine. She would get angry when I called her Alko, for some reason, it seemed she hated her own name. After some thought, I decided she seemed like a very distinguished person, so I came to call her Sensei. Sensei would seriously listen to anything I had to say, and would always dispel my ex uh, with uh, and would always dispel my anxieties with but a single word without fail. I was depressed from the accident, but slowly, thanks to Sensei. I began to return to my former self. Even those scary black scribbles didn't seem quite so scary anymore when talking with Sensei. I didn't know who she was or where she was from. Perhaps she really was a teacher. But I don't care. It doesn't matter at all. Because it's fun being with Sensei. 
That alone is all that matters. And that alone is more than enough. Hey, Sensei! Look what I can do! I wanted to surprise her one day. So using the fruit knife I brought from the hospital, I cut down a tree growing in the field. Like before, I run the knife along the scribble-like line and cut it cleanly across the base. Amazing, isn't it? I can cut anything easily, as long as it's somewhere where I can see the scribbles. No one else can do this, right? Shiki! She slaps me across the face. Sensei? What you did just now was extremely thoughtless. Sensei gives me a hard, piercing glare. I don't know why, but I realized I did something I definitely shouldn't have done. With Sensei's severe expression, and the pain from my cheek where she slapped me, I felt very, very sad. I'm sorry. Before I knew it, I was crying. <sighs> Shiki. Then a gentle, warm feeling env uh, envelops me. There's no need to apologize. It's true that you did something I should be angry at you for. But it's definitely not your fault. Sensei squats down and hugs me. But you know, if someone doesn't tell you otherwise now, one day you're going to make a mistake you can never take back. That's why I won't apologize. You can hate me all you want, if you feel that way. No, I don't hate you, Sensei. Really, I'm glad you feel that way. I guess it was fate the two of us met like your, uh, I guess it was the, Jesus, I guess it was fate the two of us met here like this. Sensei began to ask about the scribbles I could see. As I told her about the lines, the black jagged lines that somehow only I could see, Sensei's embrace tightened. Shiki. What you're seeing is something that should never be seen, by anyone, or anything. Everything in existence has points where they're almost, uh, excuse me, where they're most easily broken. We, who will break down one day, are imperfect for this reason. Your eyes have the ability to see the fate of all things. To put it another way, you can see the future. See the future? That's right. You can see death. You don't need to know any more than that. If someday you happen to go down that path, the principles will become clear to you as something that is needed. Sensei, I really don't understand. That's good. It's important that you don't understand now. All I want you to know is that you must never cut these lines on a whim or as a joke, understand? If you do so, your eyes will begin to take the lives of others too lightly. And that's the worst thing that can possibly happen. Okay. I won't do it if you say so, Sensei. Besides, it kind of hurts my chest. I'm sorry, Sensei. I'll never do it again. Good for you, Shiki. Never forget the feelings that you've experienced here today. If you stay that way, I'm sure you'll find happiness. Sensei finally, uh, Sensei finally lets go of me. But Sensei, I see those lines and get worried. They'll be cut as soon as I trace them, right? Then... It wouldn't be weird for my surroundings to come apart at any time. You're right. I'll be able to help you with that at least. It seems that is the reason why I'm here. Sensei sighs, then favors me with a warm smile. Shiki, I'll give you a very special present tomorrow. I'll give you your old life back. The one you were living before your accident. The next day. 
exactly the seventh day after I met Sensei. She arrives on the grassy field, carrying a large trunk in one hand. Here. If you put these on, those strange scribbles won't be visible anymore. She, What she gave me was a pair of glasses. But my eyes are fine. Just put them on. The lenses don't have any magnification or anything. Sensei forces them on me. Suddenly. Whoa! Incredible! This is amazing, Sensei! I can't see the scribbles anymore. Not at all! Of course. I had quite a time stealing the mystic eye killer from my older sister to make this Aozaki Aoko masterpiece. So treat them well, or they'll be held to pay, got it? Yep. I'll take good care of them. You're incredible, Sensei. You made all those horrible lines disappear just like that. It's like magic. Of course. I am a sorceress, after all. Giving me a proud smile, Sensei puts her trunk down on the ground. But know this, Shiki. Those lines haven't disappeared. It's just that you can't see them. Once you take the glasses off, you'll be able to see them again. Really? Yes. That's the one thing that cannot be fixed. Your only choice is to keep living your life and do your best with the eyes you have now. No. I don't want these scary eyes. If I cut those lines again, I'll end up breaking my promise to you. Oh, you mean never cutting the lines again? <laughs> Silly. You can break that promise whenever you like. Really? But you said it was something I shouldn't do. Yes, it is. But that's your gift, Shiki. It's yours to use as you see fit. No one else but you has the right to judge you. But out of all the abilities one can have, yours is terribly unique. If you have such a power, that means there's a meaning behind you having it. God doesn't give us powers for no reason. You might say you were given the mystic eyes of death perception, because one day, a time will come when you will need them. That's why you must not live in denial of their existence. Sensei squats down so our eyes could be level. But you know, that's why you must never forget. You're a very kind person, Shiki. As long as you remain the way you are now, your eyes will never bring forth any wrong. However, I'm not telling you to become a saint. All I'm saying is, live true to yourself and become a man in the manner that you think is right. Since you can accept your mistakes and are able to apologize, I know that in ten years, you'll become a great man. That being said... Oh, excuse me. That being said, Sensei stands and reaches for her trunk. Oh, but I must say, unless in exceptional circumstances, you shouldn't take the glasses off. Special powers attract other special powers. Only when you decide there's no other way should you take your glasses off. And even then, be mindful of how you use your power. Power in itself is not evil. What is evil rests solely in the hearts of the ones wielding such power. Be it good or evil, it'll be up to you and the choices you make. She picks up her trunk. Sensei doesn't say anything more after that. But deep down, I knew we would have to part. It's impossible, Sensei. I can't do it. I won't understand by myself. The truth is, I was so afraid before I met you. I was only able to return to being me because you were with me. I can't do it. Not even with these glasses. If you're gone, I can't do it. Don't say such things, Shiki. If you tell lies that even yourself can't believe, you'll only make whoever hears you sad. Sensei raises her eyebrows in displeasure and pokes my forehead. You know it yourself, don't you? You're all right now. So don't say stupid things and give up on the self that you finally found. 
Only you can choose to be you. No one else can do it for you. Sensei turns around. Well, this is goodbye. Listen, Shiki. Life's not easy. Everyone's life is hard. Excuse me. Everyone's life is a hard, long, rocky road. Filled with many pitfalls. You have more power than anyone else to do something about that. So pull yourself together. Sensei is leaving. I was sad. But I'm Sensei's friend. So I have to see her off properly. Yes. Goodbye, Sensei. Well done. That's right, Shiki. Hold on to that confidence. And always live true to yourself. When you find yourself in trouble, calm down and think things through carefully. Okay? A solution will always present itself to you, if you do. It'll be alright. You'll manage. Even on your own. Sensei laughs happily. The wind blows. The field of grass sways in unison. Sensei was already gone. Goodbye, Sensei. After saying that, I really felt that I would not see her again. All that remained were her many words and these mysterious glasses. It was only seven days, but she taught me things more valuable than anything else. As I stand there by myself, I feel tears well up in my eyes. Man... I was such a fool. I could only say goodbye. I couldn't even say a single word of thanks to her. I left the hospital soon after that. Afterwards, I didn't return to the Tono household, but was taken to live with my relatives instead. But it's alright. Tono Shiki will be just fine, even by himself. I'll spend a new life with my new family. And like that, Tonoshiki's ninth summer ended. The new autumn arrived, and I think, he be uh, I, think I became more of an adult. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Jesus. Doing that scene again hit different after the first four routes for some reason. That hit different. I don't know why. <laughs> I guess because you have, like, more of an idea of, like, what he's in for, you know? Alrighty. Autumn. The last traces of summer are disappearing today. A Thursday, halfway through October. This is the day when I, Tonoshiki, return home. It's been eight years since I left. Shiki, hurry up! You're going to be late for school. I hear Keiko-san's voice floating in from the kitchen. Okay, I'm leaving. I call back. I place my hands together in the room that was mine at the Arimas up until now. I'm going. Thanks for letting me live with you these last eight years. Clap, clap. I fold my hands together in prayer. Then, grabbing only my bag, I leave the room that had become so familiar. I walk through the entrance to the Arimas house, and then turn to face it. Shiki! Keiko-san, who had come to the door to see me off, calls my name somberly. See you later. Take care, Mom. What a strange thing to say. I won't be coming back. Never again will I pass through this door as a member of the Arima family. 
Thanks for looking after me. Please give, uh, please give my regards to Father, too. Keiko-san simply nods. Eight years. The eyes of the person who had been my mother look so sad. I don't think I've ever seen her like that before. I'm sure it'll be hard for you at the Tono house. Please watch yourself. Your body is weak. You mustn't overdo it. I'll be okay. After eight years, I'm just as healthy as anyone else. I'm a lot tougher than I look. I suppose you're right. But the Tonos are different from everyone else. I'm worried they'll be too much for you. I know what Keiko-san means. No, you don't. <laughs> My home from today forth will be a mansion. An uncommon sight in this day and age. Not only is the house amazing, but the family itself is highly respected. It's said that they hold significant investments in many corporations. To top things off, it's my true home. The Arimas have only been looking after me. Excuse me. But it's already decided. Yeah. It's something that's decided already. All right. I'll be heading off then. Thanks for taking care of me. I repeat those words one last time and turn my back on the household I had grown so accustomed to over these past eight years. <sighs> I leave the Arimas and start walking to school with a heavy heart. Eight years ago, I recovered from a serious injury that normally would have meant death. Then I was entrusted to the Arimas, a family branching off from the Tono family. I had lived with my real parents at the Tono mansion up until I was nine, and then I lived with the Arimas for eight years up until now, my second year of high school. I lived a normal life as an adopted son. From the time I met Sensei, those special circumstances Sensei told me about as she parted never happened, and the glasses hid the lines from me as long as I wore them. The life of Tonoshiki was a peaceful one. It meandered along gently, until a few days ago, the day when the head of the Tono family sent word to me. Return to the Tono mansion. The very, uh, the very family that, until now, had shunned me, I sigh again. To be perfectly honest, even before the accident, I had never gotten along with the Tono household. Maybe as a kid I never liked the formality demanded by the family. Perhaps that's why I said nothing when the old man told me I was going to live with the Arimas. I think it turned out well. I got along with my adopted parents, Keiko-san and Fumio-san. It was as if they were my real parents. I lived a normal life in the loving family of the Arimas, like a real son, just like I had always wished. I don't regret living there, except for one thing. My little sister, one year younger than me, remained behind with the Tonos. Lakia, I bet she hates me now. It would only be natural. She had to live in that mansion all by herself, under the constant supervision of that hard-headed old man. I could easily imagine what Akiha thought of me, the one who escaped. I let out another sigh. I can't help it. What's going to happen will happen. Today, after school, I'll return to my true home. Lord knows what'll hap- uh, Lord knows what'll occur. But for now, I've got more pressing problems. My watch shows 7.45. Homeroom starts at 8 o'clock sharp, and anyone who isn't in class by 8 is marked as late. Clutching my bag, I start sprinting towards school. I 
manage to make it to school in less than ten minutes. I enter from the back gate, accomplishing a feat that would bring the track scouts running if they knew. <sighs> come to think of it, today's also the last day I'll come in through the back gate. The Arima and Tono houses are on the opposite sides of the school, with the Arimas being behind, while the Tonos is in front. Obviously, I'll be coming through the front gate in the future. <sighs> and I quite like the lonely atmosphere back here, too. For some reason, the back gate at our school isn't really popular. Only ten people or so, myself included, actually use it. It's quiet, and pretty devoid of people day or night. Clang. Clink, clink, clang. Like I said, pretty quiet. The sound of a hammer mixed with distant bird singing reaches my ears. Hammering, huh? Clang, clink, clong. A half-rhythmical ringing comes from one corner of the courtyard. What is that? Homeroom begins in less than ten minutes. I don't have time to stop and find out, but I'm pretty curious. Right now. Okay, so... Just as a refresher... This is like the first big choice. If I were curious and went to take a look, that would, I believe, lock me into the seal route, uh, which we've already done. And if you haven't seen that, you can go watch. Uh, the whole thing is uploaded to my YouTube channel. Uh, so we're actually going to be a good student because there's only a few minutes left until homeroom. So we have to head there right away. I arrive in class earlier than usual. Phew. I walk to my desk, next to the window, where the protagonist sits. Uh, I think that's Yumizuka, right? Good morning, Tonokun. An unfamiliar voice greets me. Huh? I turn around, confused. Tonokun, the teacher was just looking for you. He said he wanted to talk to you about your house. Uh, my home? Must be about me moving. I should have finished the formalities yesterday. Perhaps there's something I forgot to do. The girl doesn't move, but stands there looking at me. Uh, good morning, Yumizuka. Yeah, good morning, Tonokun. Looks like you remembered my name. Sighing with relief, Yumizuka Satsuki gives a faint smile. Uh, I can remember the name of my own classmates, you know. It's just that I haven't spoken to you much. Yeah. I was a little nervous about talking to you. Yumizuka smiles again. She seems happy about something. Yumizuka continues to stare at me, as if she wants to say something else. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know her that well. Although we're in the same class, I can count the times we I can count the times we've spoken. But Yumizuka Satsuki is the center of attention. She's often the topic of conversation among the boys, and there aren't many bad rumors about her among the girls. In short, she's your typical class idol. Naturally, she's always surrounded by a crowd. She's the complete opposite of a loner like me. While I might be able to remember the name Yumizuka Satsuki, there's no reason for her to remember the name Tonoshiki. It seems like some bothersome coincidences are at work today. Tonokun, um, can I ask you a question? If I can answer, you can ask as many as you want. Um, um, sorry if it's something personal, but you said you're moving. Are you going to move somewhere far away? Her voice trails off, as if it's hard for her to ask. She clasps, uh, she clasps her hands to stop fidgeting. I, I know it's sudden, but will you be transferring somewhere? Uh, no, no. I'm just changing my residence, but not my school. 
My new house is still in this town anyway, so it's no big deal. Oh, that's good. Yumizuka sighs with relief. Ugh, how odd. Why would something like me moving cause that kind of reaction? <laughs> of course, piece of shit, okay. But, are you going to leave the Arimas? Yeah. I enjoyed living with them, but I can't leech off them forever. Huh? How does Yumizuka know that? No one at the school should know I was living with the Arimas except for a certain guy. What's up, Tono? A carefree, loud voice rings out from the classroom doorway. As if on cue, the guy who's been my friend since middle school appears. Hey, if it isn't Yumizuka, it's not often that I see you talking to Tono. Morning, Inui-kun. Yumizuka looks away with an unenthusiastic reply. I guess she isn't the type who'd respond well to a guy like him. Tono's picking up chicks? What the hell's going on? I thought you weren't interested in him. Arihiko exclaims this joke loudly. You moron. Stop spreading lies. I'm a normal guy. Of course I'm interested in girls. <laughs> Is that right? Good for you, man. Still, these days, girls find it more amusing if you have a weird sex drive instead. But they'll only find it amusing if you... Uh, but they'll only find it amusing, and it won't go any farther. His bottomless, cheerful laughter echoes throughout the morning classroom. I let out another sigh. I once again wonder, like I have many times before, how I ended up knowing this person. His hair dyed orange, ears pierced. His vicious glare that shouts he'll pick a fight with anyone, anytime, and his wearing of rebellious clothes. Inui Arihiko is the only free-spirited outlaw in our university-oriented high school. Do you have to be so loud this early in the morning? I'm depressed about all sorts of stuff, so stay away from me today, okay? I wave my hands to shoo him away. Depressed? What's wrong, man? Is it that time of the month? Wait, I take that back. Rather than just for today, stay away from me for the rest of my life. My depression will only get worse with you around. Ignoring Arihiko, I head back to my own desk. Dropping my bag and taking a seat, I stretch my back. Hey, you can't just ignore other people like that, Tono. You're going to hurt people with that careless attitude of yours. Oh, that's news to me. Isn't there, isn't there some way I can kill them instead? If you could tell me now, I'll repay, to, uh, I'll repay you by trying it out on you. That's cold, man. Aren't you just a little nastier than usual this morning? Didn't I tell you I'm depressed? Other people aside... I'm certainly not showing any kindness to you. Arihiko sighs. Why are you only mean to me, Tono? You're like a saint to everyone else. It's not fair. What? You just figured that out? The world's unfair. You really are only mean to me. Arihiko gives another exaggerated sigh. I didn't try particularly hard to be cold to Arihiko. That's just the kind of relationship we have. So, Arihiko, what's a chronically late night owl who never show up? What's a chronically late night owl who never shows up until second period, doing here in homeroom? It's a little, no, it's very odd. <laughs> I was thinking that too. I guess being at school on time isn't just for when I happen to wake up early. Well. I won't comment on your hobbies, but I'm asking it. But what I'm asking is why you woke up so early. Why I woke up early? Uh, I guess it's because I can't stay out late since all that fuss started. So I actually go to sleep at night now. You've heard stories about that serial killer, haven't you? I see. 
Come to think of it, I did hear something like that. I feel a tinge of regret at needing Arihiko to remind me. For the past two or three days, I had been debating whether or not to return to the Tono household, so I completely lost touch with the news. What was it again? They've given it some really nasty name, like freakish serial killings or something. Oh no, fuck, that was Shiki talking. Whatever. There's more to it. So far, all the victims have been young girls. The eighth victim was only two days ago. And to top it all off, they were all... Uh, wait, what happened to him again? Arihiko tilts his head in contemplation. I'm an idiot for asking him. Yeah, I remember now. All the victims were cut up into pieces and arranged in a pattern or something. No, Inui-kun. Everyone who was killed lost a lot of blood. Oh, yeah, that was it. They said it's some kind of modern-day vampire or something. Huh. Oh, shit, that's, uh, Shiki. Hmm. You sure know a lot about this, yumizuka san Not really. It's happening in this town, so it's in the news. You'd remember it even if you didn't want to. I see. I thought it was happening in a neighboring town, but I guess it's moved down here. Uh, okay, that's... Well, anyway, that's what happened. Even I wouldn't be going on the streets at night with a killer walking around. That's why I've been waking up at 7 or, uh, lately. What, that's it? Having a good reason doesn't make a good story. Where's the fun in that? Man, you're cold. What, did you collapse from anemia already this morning? I'm alright, thanks for asking. If I was anemic 24 hours a day, I'd be dead by now. Yeah, you're right. If you say you're okay, then I guess you're okay. And the bell rings, interrupting our conversation. Uh, hey, class is about to begin. Hurry up and get back in your seat. With a yeah, Arihiko goes back to his seat. See you later, Tonokun. Uh, yeah. Sorry for keeping you, Yumizuka-san. Her light footsteps tap across the floor as she returns to her desk. Second period is over. Our homeroom teacher, who is also a math teacher, calls out to me as he leaves. Tono, your documents are missing some details. Please go visit the office. It shouldn't take long, so I'll head to the office before third period starts. The office is on the first floor. The second year classroom is on the third floor, but I could make it back before third period starts if I run. I run. And run. And run! <laughs> The impact, uh, the impact floors me with a thud. My head hits something, and the world swims before my eyes. Ow! Ow, ow, ow! I hear a voice nearby. It's a woman's voice I've never heard before. It looks like I ran into someone. I'm sorry, are you alright? I still can't see my surroundings too well, but I apologize to the person I hit. Yes, I'm all right. How about you? Are you okay? There's no trace of accusation in that gentle voice. I don't know who she is, but she seems like she's worried about me. Open your fucking eyes, Jesus. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm also okay. I shake my head and stand up. Finally, I can see clearly. Are you really all right? Your forehead is swelling up. Huh? I feel a prickle of pain when I try to touch it with my hand. Just like she said, I'm developing a magnificent lump. I'm so sorry. I was not paying attention to where I was going. Your, forebe uh, your forehead must really hurt, right? 
the female student gazes apologetically at my face. From the formal way she spoke, I assumed she was a first year. From, from, uh, but from the color of her ribbon, I can see she's a third year. In other words, my senpai. No, it's fine, really. I'm the one at fault. I'm sorry for bumping into you, senpai. I lower my head in a bow. Oh, come to think of it, you're right. You shouldn't be running down the hallways, you know. There are people like me spaced out while looking down at the courtyard. Yes. I'll be more careful. Are you alright, senpai? Yes, I only fell. It's because you ran into the wall while trying to avoid hitting me, Tonokun. Really? No wonder I'm seeing stars. I'm lucky to get off with just a bump after running into a wall like that at that speed. Sorry about that, but spacing out in the hallway is also dangerous, senpai. Yeah, I'll be more careful. Senpai smiles and nods. It's an honest smile. Uh, excuse me. I'd best be going. Beating the dust off my pants, I begin walking toward the office. But the older student continues to watch me through her glasses. I think that was Shiki talking earlier. Whatever. Wait. Just who is she? I was distracted because I ran into her. But come to think of it, she's beautiful. If she's this beautiful, the male students would be talking about a third-year beauty wearing glasses. Um, I'm going now. You should go back to your classroom too, senpai. Uh, if you're in any pain, uh, please come back to my classroom. I'm Tono from second year, third class. I'll take responsibility. She nods. Even though she's older than me, it's like dealing with someone younger. All right. If anything happens, I'll come to your classroom at lunchtime. Remember, Shiki-kun, you mustn't run in the hallways. Okay, but you shouldn't space out in the hallways either, senpai. With that, I wave my hand and leave. Wait. Shiki-kun? I haven't told her my first name. Come to think of it, did she use my name earlier, too? Huh? Have I met you before, senpai? Huh? Senpai cries out in surprise and mischievously puts a depressed uh, puts on a depressed face. You're terrible, Tonokun. You've forgotten about me? Uh, excuse me. You've forgotten about me? Uh, forgotten? No, I didn't think so. If I ever got myself involved with a beautiful woman like her, there'd be no way I'd forget. Um. She looks up at me reproachfully. Those eyes. I'm sure I remember from somewhere. Don't I? Come to think of it, we exchanged greetings once or twice before, didn't we? Seal Senpai, right? I say her name apprehensively. Yes, and I'm glad you remember. You seem the type to space out and forget, Tonokun. I don't think I space out. But there's nothing I can do about the fact that I forgot. Well, uh, then goodbye. Let's meet again at lunchtime. Seal Senpai bows again. I watch her walk down the hallway. <laughs> it's lunchtime. Now then, where should I eat lunch? Uh... Hold on. I forget which one I'm supposed to pick. <laughs> I don't think it matters, actually. It's lunchtime and the classroom starts to liven up. Some guys are dashing off towards the cafeteria. A group of girls are rearranging desks to form a table, and some students are calmly leaving the classroom, 
boxed lunches in hand. While I watched them eat, uh, excuse me, I watched them while I set down the milk and bread I bought. Sheesh, not much of an appetite as usual, huh, Tono? This guy in front of me being here is already a part of my daily routine, and I'm not about to start complaining now. But man, what's up with us? Just the two of us eating lunch together. What kind of meal goes unaccompanied by a beautiful blossom? If you don't have any blossoms, why don't you go? Uh, why don't you go join that group over there? I'm not gonna stop you, idiot. When I say blossom, I mean a single beautiful blossom. Those girls making a group aren't good. They're poisonous rather than being beautiful. Arihiko's comment would have probably earned him some rocks thrown in his direction if the group of girls had heard him. Luckily, the girls in our class didn't hear his poisonous words. That's pretty harsh, Arihiko. I know you were a bad guy before, but haven't you been getting worse lately? You're surpassing merely bad and getting into... deviant. I can't help it, can I? When there's a truly beautiful blossom at our school, my discerning eye grows more critical. <laughs> so who's this beautiful blossom? That's a secret. I don't want more competition now, do I? Arihiko laughs with an ambitious smile spilling over his face. As it is something I don't have, I'm a little impressed by his ability to express himself so frankly. And then, the person I met, uh, the person I just met, comes in from the classroom door. Ah! With a boxed lunch in one hand, there's no way I could, uh, there's no way I could mistake her. Hello, Tonokun. Mind if I interrupt? Uh, uh, that's fine, of course. Smiling, Seal Senpai brings over a chair and sits down naturally. Um, Senpai, are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt at all. Even her smiling reply troubles me. You said to come here at lunchtime, so I thought it'd be rude if I did not. Uh, well, it's true that I said that, but... What I intended to say was that she could come, and I would take responsibility if she ended up being hurt. S -s senpai Arihiko slams the table with a bang as he stands up. Ah, uh, Inui-kun. Could it be that you and Tonokun are acquainted? Yeah, we're more than casual acquaintances. Tono, of, uh, Tono and I have been friends since we were kids. Right, Tono? You could even say we're best friends. Uh, Arihiko makes a tight fist for emphasis. There's no room for agreement or disagreement. Oh, really? It's such a coincidence that you two are friends. <laughs> it sure is. This bastard has such a calm face. I'm wondering just when did he start... Uh, when... I'm wondering just when did he start to get along with Senpai? Ha <laughs> Arihiko glares at me while laughing towards Senpai. Absent-mindedly, I wonder if that's what you'd call being well-rounded. In the end, Arihiko forcibly convinces Senpai to stay for lunch. Well, since she brought her lunch, perhaps that's what she had in mind in the first place. Oh, Inui-kun, do you live by yourself? Nah, I live with my sister. Our parents left us in charge of the house, so we naturally learned how to cook, that's all. Arihiko seems familiar with Senpai. He's able, to, uh, he's able to talk to her more casually than I can. I've only met her a few times. By the way, Senpai, you said you were called here by Tono. Did something happen? Yes. Uh, excuse, uh, that's uh, her talking. Yes, I ran into Tono-kun during the break. I wasn't hurt, but Tonokun hit his head. Huh. And you came to see him because you became worried? Yes, that's about right. Senpai's voice is brisk and pleasant to listen to. Since listening is more interesting than talking, 
I keep silent. That's when Arihiko directs the conversation towards me. What's wrong, Tono? Running into someone. Uh, don't tell me your anemia was acting up again. Arihiko's voice betrays his deep concern about my health. No, it's not that. I was running to the office to deal with some details for the moving. That's when I ran into Senpai. Really? Well, I guess your carelessness was at fault. Arihiko folds his uh Arihiko folds his arms and nods in agreement with himself. Tonokun, are you changing schools? Senpai suddenly uh, uh Senpai suddenly outbursts almost hysterically. Really? Why does she think I'm changing schools just because of that? I'm not changing schools, Senpai. I'm just changing my place of residence. So I filed the paperwork for a change of address. Um, so that means you're going to be living alone? No. I'm just going back to my real home. It's that fancy place on top of the hill. I still can't quite believe it yet. Oh, could that possibly be the Tono Mansion? Senpai asks with some hesitation. The western-style house on top of the hill is probably seen as something special to the residents of the town. I haven't been there for eight years, but even in my memories, the Tono Mansion was ridiculously large. Yeah, that's right. I don't think it's the right place for me either, but it's too late now that I'm done moving. Hmm. You don't seem too happy about it. Whoa! What the fuck? Sorry, my fucking computer just exploded for no reason. Um, uh-oh. Okay. That was wild. Why did that happen? Huh. You don't seem too happy about it. It's not a particularly good or bad thing. I don't really understand it myself. Well, even if it is your house, it's been eight years, right? I can understand if you're feeling restless. It'll probably feel like someone else's house for a while. I wonder if that's so. I haven't gone back yet, so I don't know. Well, I'm a bit relaxed. Since, uh, since I've always got a ref- uh, excuse me. Well, I'm a bit relaxed since I've always got a refuge at your place. Huh. <laughs> Listen, you. I'm not impressed with how you come to stay at my house every time something bad happens. I like your personality trait of not standing out. But I've hated how you're always too reserved for a long time now. Arihiko strikes the table with a bang again. Well, everything Arihiko said is true. So there's no way uh, so there's no way to fight back. Inui kun, does Tono kun really stay at your house that often? Yeah, he does. That damn Tono was too reserved towards his parents, and he would come to my place every long vacation. He's reserved, uh, he's reserved toward them because they were taking care of him. That's why he comes over to my place, where we conveniently have an empty room. Since he looks pretty decent, my sister took a liking to him, and he shamelessly comes to stay with us without paying a cent. Arihiko's fist trembles, as if to say, unforgivable. Taking care of Tonokun? Uh... Arihiko clamps a hand over his mouth. Sorry. I should have thought before I spoke. It's okay. You didn't say anything wrong. I continue to eat my bread without looking at Arihiko. Really? Yeah, you're right. If you complain about that, you'll be in for some punishment. Arihiko nods to himself in agreement. His overwhelming optimism is something I'm truly envious of. Tonokun, um, did you not get along with your previous family? No, that's not it. This guy had no problem with the Arimas. Oh, the Arimas are the family that took care of him. 
They're really nice people, and from what I could see, they're a happy family. Even so, he refused to be their adopted child, and he escaped to my place every vacation. Sheesh. Just what were you not satisfied with anyway? There's nothing I wasn't satisfied with. It's just that I've received so much for them already. I didn't want to be a further burden on them. I turn away, and all of a sudden, I realize Yumizuka's close by. Her eyes looks like she wants to. Her eyes look like she wants to say something, but it seems like she can't bring herself to intrude. Uh, what's wrong, Yumizuka-san? I leave Arahiko and Senpai and call out to Yumizuka. Uh, uh, I have something I want to talk to you about. Is now a good time? Sure. Can we talk here? Um. Yumizuka's eyes flicker toward Arihiko. It seems Yumizuka isn't good at dealing with Arihiko. Is it all right if we discuss it in the hallway? Uh, I don't mind. I'm leaving for a while, Arihiko. Waving to Arihiko and Senpai, I exit with Yumizuka into the hallway. So, what did you want to ask me? Um, I'm sorry if I'm in the wrong about this, but... Have you been walking around at night in the business district lately? Huh? Business district? I rarely go there, even in the daytime, let alone at night. Her question is so entirely off that I become interested instead. Hmm. At night, you say? Around what time? Well, from what I've heard, past midnight. Midnight. Then that rules it out completely. Hold on a second. Her investigating the rumor that Shiki was going out in the business district at night is what got her killed and turned into a vampire. But I don't think we ever find out where she heard that rumor in the first place. Like, who would spread a rumor like that? Because as far as I know, Shiki did not go to the business district at night before the events of Tsukihime. So... I wonder... I wonder where that... That's like one... I guess that's... That's, that's something we don't know yet. Okay. It's just she heard it from somewhere. Do we never find out about it? Well, don't tell me, actually. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. I think in Remake, it's a different... But in the OG, it's just never explained. It's just never explained? Aww. That sucks. <laughs> okay. Midnight. Then that rules it out completely. I occasionally go to the business district. Uh, I occasionally go out to the business district. Uh, business district. Business district. Business district. Jesus Christ. I occasionally go out to the business district at night to buy something, but I've never been out into the city that late before. That's definitely not me. My household is old fashioned, so they've got a curfew at seven. You can't get in after that, even if you cry. Since I don't want to have to camp outside, I try uh, I try to my death to get home before 7. I'm up front in denying Yumizuka's question. She smiles happily. Yeah, I know. The Arima family is also the head of a style of tea ceremony. That's right. They must be really strict for you, Tonokun. It's not so much as... Uh... It's not so much as they like to tease me. Huh? Yumizuka-san, you seem to know quite a bit. Are you a student of them? No, I don't really know much about tea ceremony. I have a friend who goes there and she told me it was really strict. Oh, but Yumizuka-san, how did you know I lived with the Arimas? I haven't even told anyone here at our high school. You've forgotten that we went to the same middle school together, haven't you? Yumizuka giggles as she speaks. Huh? 
We went to the same middle school. I can't remember. So I can't say anything, but if that's true, then it wouldn't be odd if she knew I was entrusted to the Arimas. Yumizuka-san, maybe, um... It's okay as long as it's not you, Tonokun. Sorry for interrupting your lunch. Interrupting my words, Yumizuka Satsuki goes back into the classroom after saying this. Yo! Is your conversation over? Yeah. It seems like she just got the wrong person. Hey, Arihiko. Yeah. Yumizuka went to our middle school. To say more, she was our classmate during our second and third year. And now in the second year of high school, making for... Making for three years in total. Huh? As if he knew my question, he answers. How did you know I was gonna... How did you know what I was gonna ask? Because of that look on your face. But damn. I thought you were just ignoring her. But you actually didn't even notice her. She's pretty persistent. Or maybe she's just eccentric. She's had to suffer a lot. Arihiko makes a difficult face and shrugs. Ah, I knew it! She's Tonokun's girlfriend, right? What are you saying, senpai? There's no way that could be. I've never even had a proper conversation with her. No, no, there's no use hiding it. You two look like you get along very well. I'm a little jealous. What's making her so happy? Senpai looks at me with an excited expression. S senpai Arihiko, you say something to this confused person over here, too. About what? I don't know what you and Yubizuka are up to. All I know is that you two were having a merry conversation this morning. <laughs> a secret meeting at a school in the morning? How bold of you, Tonokun! Senpai is getting more and more worked up in an incomprehensible way. Well, whatever. After all, it doesn't matter to me if Senpai misunderstands. But you mustn't be so blunt to her, Tonokun. Yumizuka-san looks kind of sad, doesn't she? You've got to give her more of your attention. Senpai, lunch is going to end soon. Yes. See you later, Tonokun. Inui-kun. Smiling, Senpai leaves our classroom. Huh. <sighs> I feel a little exhausted. Tono. Don't go after Yumizuka. Arihiko mumbles this with a stern face. Don't go after? Why? Listen, about Yumizuka. Despite her appearance, she's really shy and single-minded. She's not compatible at all with someone absent-minded like you. That kind of girl is dangerous to get really involved with. Arihiko goes back to his own seat. What is he talking about? It's not like I'm thinking of doing something with Yumizuka-san. I mutter to no one in particular, and sit down in my own seat. The last class of the day ends. I don't feel like going to the mansion right away, so I just blankly stare out of the window, overlooking the school grounds. The classroom is dyed orange by the sunset. It's like red watercolor paint, and it hurts my eyes. I don't like red. It feels like it soaks deep into the back of my eyes, and I want to throw up. It seems I'm weak against things that resemble blood. No, I should say I'm weak against blood itself. Eight years ago, I had a near-death experience. I was in an accident where I was injured in the chest and I teetered between life and death for days. I should have died instantly. But, miraculously, I survived. Maybe it's because of the great medical treatment. However, the injuries were so severe that I don't even remember the accident. Eight years ago, when I was a child, I felt a thud pass right through the middle of my chest. Then I passed out. When I woke up, I was in a hospital bed. All I could remember afterwards 
was the pain and the cold. I don't remember much of the accident, but even today, the scar on my chest remains. I guess numerous fragments of glass pierced my chest, leaving burn-like scars there in my back. Actually, I was quite, su uh, I was quite surprised at being saved. Ever since then, I frequently collapse from an anemia-like dizziness and cause a lot of trouble for others. Maybe that's why my old man believed I was unfit to be the heir of the Tono household and entrusted me to our relatives. A wound on my chest, huh? The huge scar on the middle of my chest, hidden from view by my uniform. Now that I think about it, after that accident, uh... After that accident was when I started to see those lines. I'm able to forget them, thanks to the glasses that Sensei gave me. But I think I would have gone completely mad if I had never met her. Keiko-san, the person who'd been my mother up until now, said that when I left the Tono household... Uh, excuse me. Uh... Excuse me. Keiko, uh, the person who I had been... Fuck, we just start over. <laughs> Keiko-san, the person who had been my mother up until now, said that when I left, said when I left, that the Tono Mansion, fuck me, dude. Sometimes I feel like my brain has rollback where I just see words that aren't there. <laughs> um, Keiko-san, the person who had been my mother up until now, said when I left that the Tono household wasn't normal. No problem. I'm not a normal person myself. Adjusting my crooked glasses, I pick up my bag. I can't stay in the classroom forever. Okay, so... I could stay in school for a little longer, which would make me run into Seal Senpai. Um, so we're gonna go to the mansion. I don't have anything to do, so I hurry up and leave school. Come to think of it, I hadn't left the school by the main entrance since, uh... I hadn't left the school by the main entrance since, uh, since the entrance ceremony. I guess this'll be the way to and from school now, since I live in the mansion. Leaving from the main gate, I come to the intersection that leads to the residential district. This is the point at which the path leads to the city and the residential district, where the mansion is part... Oh, it's Tonokun! Suddenly, I run into Yumizuka. Oh, hello, Yumizuka-san. It may have been because of Seal Senpai's teasing, but I feel a little embarrassed. Yumizuka-san looks at me, bewildered. Uh, Yumizuka-san, is there something on my face? Um, I was wondering what you were doing here, Tonokun. Isn't your house in the other direction? Oh, well, it was until yesterday, but I'm living somewhere else starting today. From now on, I'll be living at the place on top of the hill, at the end of the residential district. Oh, so that's why you were talking- Oh, uh, so that's what you were talking about this morning. Yumizuka clasps her fist and an open palm together in understanding. Like that. Well, all flattery aside, that gesture seems incredibly cute. That's right. I guess there's no, uh, I guess there's no point hiding it from you, since you already know. I'm leaving my guardians, the Arimas, and going back to my real house today. Your real house? You mean the Tono Mansion? Yeah. I don't think it really suits me either. I see. You're really a prince at the top of the hill after all. Uh, It was a secret only Inui-kun and I knew. But now I guess everyone's gonna find out. With a faint smile, Yumizuka casts her gaze into the distance. She looks out at the horizon, as if looking at the Tono Mansion off in the distance at the top of the hill. 
But will you be all right? Even if it is your house, you've been away for eight years, right? Aren't you afraid or worried? Yeah, I'm actually kind of uneasy. I never liked that mansion to begin with. And now it's going to feel like someone else's house, too. Still, I can't lead a carefree life of my own and leave my sister Akiha there all by herself. No matter how uneasy I am, I have to return to the mansion. In the end, it's still my home. I think it's only natural for me to go back. I see. Uh, sorry for stopping you, Tonokun. You must be in a hurry, right? No, not really. I was just having a stroll on the way home. Oh, I see. For some reason, Yumizuka looks downcast and falls silent. What's wrong, Yumizuka-san? Are you feeling sick? I break the silence, but she continues to stare downward with her, uh, without raising her head. I can't just leave her there, so I continue to stand there, looking at her. And then... Um... Yeah, what is it? Um, uh... I'm going home along the same way as you, uh, until we reach up the hill. Really? Well, then let's go together for part of the way. Huh? Yumizuka's eyes widen, and she stands there stiffly for a moment. Y yeah, you're right. We're going back the same way, so it wouldn't be strange for us to go together for part of the way, right? She says this with an excessively cheerful voice, and stands right beside me. Okay. Just at the right time, too. I'm not too familiar with the streets around here, so would you mind guiding me? Sure. Well then, let's go down this street. It's a back street that leads all the way to the street on the hill. I walk home while chatting with Yumizuka. Talking to Yumizuka isn't anything particularly special, but it is enjoyable in a kind of peaceful way. Despite what Arihiko had said, Yumizuka Satsuki has a gentle air about her, and I safe and I feel safe being around her. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> While we were talking, Yumizuka suddenly laughs as if she remembered something. What is it all of a sudden? Did I say something funny? No, that's not it. It's just that starting tomorrow. I'll be taking the same route to school as you. She laughs, looking truly happy. That honest, smiling face is enough to make me happy as I watch her. I didn't realize it up until now. Even putting her looks and mannerisms aside, Yumizuka Satsuki is kind of cute. I'm slowly beginning to understand why the boys in our class had been so worked up for her over, uh, over her for so long now. Our conversation ceases. I'm simply fascinated by Yumizuka's smile, and the two of us fall silent. Without saying anything, we walk toward the residential district in the sunset. Suddenly... Hey, do you remember what happened during the winter vacation of our second year of middle school? Yumizuka murmurs. Ugh. I tilt my head to one side. The winter vacation of the second year of middle school was when I had applied to stay for extra lessons at the school because I felt bad about staying with the Arimas. I remember it well enough, but I still don't understand why she asked me about it. Just as I thought, someone like Tonokun would never have remembered. Disappointed, Yumizuka's shoulders drop. There were two sports sheds at our middle school, remember? One was a new shed used by the big clubs, and the other was an old one used by the smaller clubs like badminton. The old shed had a certain problem where the alignment of the door was bad, so there were often times when it wouldn't open. Old shed. That little concrete building in the back of the gymnasium. 
Oh, that shed. The one they stopped using after some students got trapped inside. Yeah, that's the one. The students were second years from the badminton club. Oh. Yeah, something like that did happen. It was early in the new year, on a cold winter's day. The first three days of the new year having passed, I had applied for extra lessons. Uh, less lessons. <laughs> I applied for extra giant forest monsters. I had applied for extra lessons and required uh, and requested to stay behind at school and help out because I felt bad about staying at the Arimas. But even that was only f until five in the evening. It had become dark, and I was forced out of the classrooms as all the teachers were going home. The middle of winter. Even if it was only five, the surroundings had really darkened. The weather report had predicted snow for that day, and the cold was extra harsh. And so, just when I had decided to head straight home for the day, I heard a banging sound from the old shed, and I went to check things out. Is anyone in there? I asked, and I heard the voices of several female students in reply from inside the shed. They had been trapped in there for two hours. While packing up uh, the club equipment, they had closed the door because of the cold, and now it wouldn't open again. They couldn't open the door no matter what, and wanted me to call one of the teachers for help. But the teachers had all gone home. Even if I were to call them now on the phone, it'd be, a le uh, it, uh, it'd be least another hour. The cold on that day was truly terrible. In the kind of cold that should have prompted snow, I thought it would be cruel to leave those girls stuck in the shed wearing only their P.E. uniforms for another hour. After some hesitation, and confirming that no one else was around. I took off my glasses and cut the line on the shed door. The door opened, and about five female students, eyes red from crying, poured out. Come to think of it, there was something like that. But I'm surprised you know about it. The captain of the Trap Badminton Club told me, this has to do with the club survival, so don't tell anyone else. It was almost like she was threatening me. Oh, Tono-kun. You had no interest in who was trapped inside there, did you? Listen. I was one of those badminton club members. Yumizuka sounds like she's pouting. Huh. So in other words. I still remember it well. When I think about it now... It was only being trapped inside a shed, but at the time it was cold and dark, and I was really worried. Everyone thought we were going to freeze to death like that. My stomach was growling from hunger, too. I was just about to collapse. Huh. That must have been rough. I can't really empathize with her, so I give a half-hearted response. Unconcerned. Yumizuka continues her recollections, bringing up old events anew. And just, within, uh, just when everyone was trembling, you came along and asked, Is anyone there? In your casual, unexcited voice. And then the captain got angry and shouted, Can't you tell just by looking? <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. There was a loud bang when she threw the bat at the door. I was really surprised. That's right, Yumizuka says, laughing. But when we heard all the teachers had gone home, we really lost all hope. We couldn't stand being there for even a minute longer, yet we had to face the prospect of being trapped until the next day. Just when we were thinking we were about how miserable the world was, you knocked on the door and said, I might be able to open the door if you can keep it a secret. Yeah, and I heard another bang, and someone said, If it opened that easily, we wouldn't be suffering in here. She was really angry. <laughs> yeah, 
The captain felt responsible for us getting trapped, so she didn't have much patience to spare. But soon after that, the door opened. Everyone was happy that the captain's knocking with the bat must have worked and ran outside. But I was watching you aimlessly standing, uh... But I was watching you aimlessly stand... But I was watching you aimlessly standing by the door. Yumizuka looks at me warmly. But that only troubles me. To me, it meant nothing. So I can't really appreciate her gratitude. I was crying really hard at the time. My eyes felt like they were swelling up. And they looked terrible. What do you think you said when you saw me like that? I don't know. What did I say? I really don't remember, so I ask. As if it was something someone else had done. Despite this, Yumizuka still looks up at me happily. You put your hand on my head and said, Hurry up and go home and eat some ozoni. I was a little embarrassed because I was trembling so much from the cold. Huh. I knit my brows. I don't know what I meant back then. I think you meant for me to warm up my body by having ozoni. I see. It was right after New Year's, after all. That does sound like the kind of stupid thing I would say. Now that it's put to me like this, I regret not having picked something better to say. Back then, I thought, there are plenty of reliable people at school. But if I ever really needed to be saved, it'll be someone like Tonokun who saves me. You're exaggerating. Look, it's like how a baby chick thinks the first human meets is its mother. I just happened to help you. That's not true. Ever since then, I really believed that you'd come and help me no matter what the problem was. Her expression is quite resolute. You're giving me too much credit, Yumizuka-san. I'm not that reliable of a person. It's all right. It's what I believe, so let me keep believing it. She pronounces this while staring straight at me, and I'm too embarrassed to offer a rebuttal. Well, I guess you can believe what you want. Isn't that right? So if I'm ever in a pinch, you'll come and help me, right? Yumizuka asks me, smiling. To be honest, that would be kind of troubling. Despite what she thinks, I'm not the sort of guy who can do everything. I'm not. But when she faces me with that smile, I don't want to destroy that faith she has in me. Yeah. If it's within my power, I'll help you. Yep. Thank you, Tonokun. I know it's a bit late to say this, but I really was happy because of what you said to me back then. Saying that, Yuizuka suddenly stops. Naturally, I stop too. I've always wanted to talk to you uh, about this, Tonokun. Excuse me, let me re I didn't read that right. I've always wanted to talk to you, uh... I've always wanted to talk with you like this, Tonokun. Jesus. Somewhere in, uh, somewhere in her voice was a hint of wistfulness. Perhaps it's because of the red light from the sunset, but... Somehow, Yumizuka looks lonely. What do you mean? You can talk to me anytime. No, I can't. Inui-kun is always around you. And besides... I can't become someone like you, Tonokun. With that reserved answer, Yumizuka draws away from me. Well, my house is this way, so I'll see you at school tomorrow. Bye bye Smiling, Yumizuka waves her hand and begins walking uh, and begins walking down another street. I walk along a different path than the one I usually take. Passing through unfamiliar streets, I slowly approach the Tono Mansion. 
The surroundings are not particularly... Excuse me. The surroundings are not completely unfamiliar. After all, I had lived here until I was nine years old. Eight years ago. This is not the first time I've taken this path back to the mansion. My feelings are a little complex. The path home is nostalgic, yet fresh. Up until now, I had not looked forward to returning to the Tono household. Now, it doesn't seem so bad. The house I lived in up until now, uh, the house I lived in until I was nine years old. Right now, my sister Akiha is in that utterly un-Japanese, western-style mansion. Tono Makihisa, my old man who hated me, and the master of the Tono household, died a few days ago. My mother died from an illness after Akiha was born, so the Tonos had dwindled down to me and my sister. Being the eldest son, you would think I would you would think I would stand to become the Tono heir, but I have no such privilege. To become the Tono heir means being bound by a strict upbringing. I've lost count of the number of times my father has scolded me over my dislike of not being able to live freely. That was when I got involved in that accident, and my body became weakened. My father saw that it was a good opportunity to get rid of me. His reasoning was something along the lines of someone who could die at any moment can't become the heir, even if he is the eldest son. Sadly for my father, I betrayed his expectations by making a recovery, but my sister Akiha was already deemed to be the heir by the Tono household. And so I've heard that Akiha, who was already being raised harshly in order to become a, in order to become a proper daughter of the Tono household, received an even harsher upbringing since then. That was a long time ago. I played together with Akiha in the mansion back before the accident. After that, I never saw her again. The life in the mansion I abandoned eight years ago. Those eight years were long, and my memories of that time have largely faded. But in spite of that, there's one thing that even now continues to burn strongly within my heart, and that is... Okay, so these are the three routes that are considered, what, the far side of the moon, I think? So, we've done the little sister Akiha, the cheerful girl, and now because we've done everything, a third option has unlocked. About the girl by the window. Here we go. We have finally reached the beginning of the Kohaku route. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go. Akia isn't the only person I've I haven't seen since then. I can't remember the, all the ugh, fuck me, dude. I'm already falling apart. Ugh, okay. I can't remember all the details because it's been eight years. But there were other children at the mansion around the same age as me. I don't remember the names, but there were two girls who were twins. The old man once said that they didn't have any relatives. So he took them in to work as servants. That's weird. We played together so often when we were small. But I can't remember their names. I closed my eyes and cast my mind back. I should be able to remember. There was a girl who was always cheerful. So cheerful. That, she would be, uh, that you would become cheerful just by looking at her. A girl with a carefree personality, who was loved by everyone at the mansion. Because she was close to my age, I got along very well with her. And it seemed like every day, we would run around at the garden together. Let's play together, Shiki-san, she would say. And I could remember her taking me out of my room after I uh, secluded myself inside. She would often laugh and take shy Akiha's hand, trying to make her play with us. Maybe she was older than the both of us. She would guide me and Akiha to play together, but once we started playing, she would just watch over us. Even Akiha's tutor, the harsh butler, would say, I don't mind, 
as long as somebody is with you guys. And I let Akiha and let Akiha out to play. But I'm much more concerned about the other girl. I don't know what kind of girl she was, or why she was always like that. From the second floor, there was always a girl looking down at us every time I turned to look at the mansion while we were playing in the garden. She was the twin of that cheerful girl, but she would always gaze at us expressionlessly. That girl would never try to leave the house. All she would do was watch us with those cold eyes. Was it because it bothered me so much that I thought she seemed so lonely? Most of the memories I have about the Tono uh, Mansion are only about... Hold on, let me read that correct. Make sure I read that right. Most of the memories I have about the Tono Mansion are only about her? Okay. Well, in the end, I only ended up talking a little with her. I wonder if those girls are still at the mansion. While I think about that, I take a white ribbon out of my bag. An old white ribbon that the girls gave me at the very end. Eight years ago, after I was involved in the incident, the day I was entrusted to the Arima family, right before I was to leave the mansion, the girl gave this to me for some reason. I'm just lending it to you, so be sure to return it. Saying something along those lines, she ran off. A promise made under a large tree. The weather was beautiful that day. Looking up, there was a high, high blue sky I could just lose myself in. It was my last memory of when I left the Tono Mansion eight years ago. Huh. I put the ribbon back in my bag. But it's been eight years after all. Not only do I not know if they're still in the mansion, I can't even rem uh, I can't even remember their names. Even so, this ribbon is precious to me. The time when my father had disinherited me. Rather than being saddened over having been discarded by him, I felt a warmness inside when I thought she was waiting for me to return the ribbon. That's why I want to keep the promise, as long as I still remember it. I agreed to return to the mansion because Akiha is there now, all by herself. I left her there for eight years, pushing all responsibility onto her while I selfishly lived freely. But there's something else. I really think I decided to return because of that promise. The White Ribbon. Because of that promise, made to the only one who said she would be waiting for me. It's huge. The words escaped my mouth when I reached the gate. For someone like me, used to living in a normal house, the Tono Mansion seems well out of reality. I wonder if I rushed into this. No. It's too late to start regretting things now. The gates aren't locked. I push them open and head toward the mansion doors. They tower oppressively, bearing down on any visitors. Beside the iron double doors is an unmatching doorbell. All right. Shaking off my nervousness, I press it. There isn't any affectionate ding-dong chime from the doorbell. The oppressive silence continues for a few seconds. Then, the sound of pattering footsteps behind the door indicates someone's presence. We've been waiting for you! The door opens with a crack. With a creak, sorry. Inside is the lobby I remembered, and a young girl in an apron. Thank goodness! You're so late I was beginning to worry if you'd gotten lost. I was thinking about going out to meet you if you hadn't arrived by uh, if you hadn't arrived by sunset. 
The girl in the anachronistic apron smiles warmly. Uh, no, that's... Uh... I'm so taken aback by her outdated mode of dress that I can't even form a proper sentence. Perhaps attributing my hesitance to distrust, the girl tilts her head a little. You're Chiki-sama, aren't you? Uh, yeah, but you don't have to call me Sama. You are, right? Oh, please don't scare me like that. I was beginning to think I'd made another mistake back there. She gives a good-natured laugh. I have no basis for this, but she fits, but she fits the image perfectly. Um, uh, could you, could it be that you're the girl who played together with us when we were small? I inquire tentatively. She gives a full smile, looking truly happy. Come, you must be tired, right? Please do come in. Akiha-sama is waiting for you in the sitting room. The girl quickly crosses the lobby and heads toward the sitting room. Turning back as if she just remembered something, she makes a bow, a full smile on her face. Welcome home, Shiki-sama. Her greeting is accompanied by her flower-like smile. I can't think of any reply, so I just follow her hesitantly. Guided by the girl, I head to the sitting room. It's as if I'm seeing it for the first time. I don't know if I've forgotten about it in the last eight years, or if they've refurbished it since then. Either way, it feels like someone else's house now, and it's unsettling. As I'm looking around the sitting room, the maid in the apron lowers her head in a quick bow. I brought Shiki-sama with me. Well done. You may return to the kitchen, Kohaku. Thank you. It seems the maid's name is Kohaku. Kohaku-san gives a small bow, as if to say farewell, and leaves the sitting room. This leaves me and two girls I don't recognize. It has been a long time, Nissan says the girl with the long black hair and sharp eyes. All my thought processes stop at once. My mind goes blank, and I can't think of any words of greeting. All I can do is nod with a yeah. I don't think it can be helped. This Akiha that I had not seen in eight years is not the Akiha I remember. She's completely transformed into a proper young lady of a noble family. Nissan? The black-haired girl tilts her head slightly. Uh, um... Pathetically, all I can say are dumb-sounding things. My mind is turning in somersaults as I try to recognize the girl before me as Akiha. But it seems like Akiha already recognizes me as her brother. You do not look well. Would you like to rest a while before we talk? Akiha throws a sharp glance in my direction. Is it just my imagination that she looks like she's in a bad mood? No, I'm alright. I was just surprised at how much you've changed, Akiha. People do change over the course of eight years, Nissan. We are at an age of change. Or did you think we'd remain back, uh... Did you think we'd remain like back then forever? What is this? I can feel the thorns in Akiha's words. No. You've definitely changed, Akiha. You've become more beautiful than before. This isn't flattery. It's how I really feel. And... Indeed. But you, on the other hand, have not changed much at all. Akiha answers coldly, her eyes closed. Well, I came prepared for something like this. It is as I thought. It seems Akiha does not think well of me. If you're feeling well, let us finish our conversation. You've yet to hear the details about why you were called back here, Nissan. I've heard nothing more than a sudden come back to the mansion, though I found out in the papers that the old man passed away. If the head of a major company dies, 
It definitely makes it in the financial papers. Word of Tonomakihisa's death reached his son, Tonoshiki, via the newspaper at the funeral, after the funeral. Even though his relatives hadn't told him, this disinherited son could pick up the news of his father's death merely by buying a 100 yen newspaper. It might be cynical of me to say so, but, those, the, but the world certainly has become a convenient place. I am sorry. It was my fault that you did not get news about father. Akiha quietly lowers her hand. It's all right. Either way, it's not like he would come back from the dead if I went. It's not something you should be worried about. I'm sorry. It is somewhat comforting to hear you say that. Akiha's face is serious, but this is not a topic I much care about. A funeral is a ceremony for those who cannot uh, detach their feelings for the deceased to achieve such detachment. For someone like me, who cut off such feelings a long time ago, there's no need. Calling you back here was my idea. It would be odd for the eldest son of the Tonos to be entrusted to the Arimas forever. Now that father has passed away, the only Tonos by blood are you and I, Nisan. I don't know what father was thinking when he entrusted you to the Arimas, but he's no longer with us, so there's no longer any need for you to live with them. That is why I had you come back here. That's all well and good, but I'm quite surprised you were able to get our relatives to agree to this. Wasn't it they who came up with the idea of me living with the Arimas in the first place? That may be so, but now I am the head of the Tono family. I declined every one of their proposals from our relatives. I would like you to continue living here, Nissan, but this is a place with rules. You will avoid leaving the, uh, you will avoid living the overly casual lifestyle you've been leading up until now. <laughs> I'm afraid that's not going to happen, Akiha. There's no way I can go back to being some well-mannered gentleman now. Not that I want to. I will not ask more of you, but do try to. Or are you saying you're unable to do what I already have? Akiha shoots me a cold look. It feels like she's hitting me with her grudge, uh, feels like she's hitting me with her grudge against me for leaving her for the last eight years. Uh, all right, I get it. I'll try my best. Akiha just stares at me, as, she as if she doesn't quite believe me. You do not need to try, as long as you get the results. Her pose is dignified, her words merciless. Let's get back to the topic. Right now, you and I are the only ones living here. I do not care to have too many people around, so I cleared everyone out. Uh, hold on a second, Akiha. You cleared everyone out? You wouldn't want to run into one of our relatives in the mansion, would you, Nissan? I put up most of the servants, but there are enough for you and I, so there are no problems. Wait, no problems? You're going to get attacked at our family meeting if you do something like that. Oh, please be quiet. Rather than have the mansion overflowing with people, wouldn't you feel more relaxed with just the two of us here? Ugh. Well, it's true that I would feel more relaxed, but... But you've only just become head of the family, Akia. If you go around abusing your powers like some type of uh, uh, like some type of dictator, our relatives are not going to keep quiet. Even the old man didn't get, didn't go against their opinions. Indeed, that's why father entrusted you to the Arimas. I, on the other hand, have despised them ever since I was a child. I'm not going to put up with their whining any longer. Not gonna put up with. <laughs> Look, Akiha... Enough! Just listen. You don't have to worry about me. Please, just worry about your own life from now on, Nisan. I can see it's going to be difficult for you in many ways. Akiha says suddenly, looking away a little. Now then, if there's anything you don't understand, ask her, Hisui. She looks at the girl standing by her side. The girl called Hisui bows expressionlessly. This is Hisui. She will be your personal maid from now on. Is that acceptable? Uh, what? Personal maid? You mean... In other words, 
She is your servant. Akiha declares, as if it were obvious. I can't believe it. Fitting with the western style of the house, the girl in the maid outfit stands there, as if it's natural to do so. Oh, hold on. I'm not a kid, you know. I don't need a servant. I can take care of myself. Would that include the cooking and the laundry? Ugh. Aki is pretty sharp at pointing these things out. At any rate, now that you've returned to this house, you will obey my directions. I don't know how you lived at the Arima house, but you're living at the Tono house now. Please accept everything given to you. Ugh. I can't say anything, and my eyes drift toward Hisui. Excuse me for just a second. I might have been muted for some of that. That's unfortunate. We enter the lobby. This mansion is split into east and west wings, with a lobby in the middle. The lobby is like a... The lobby is like the body of a bird, whose wings are the halls extending diagonally to the east and west. Each wing is about the size of a small hospital. I remember the house is constructed symmetrically, so both the east and west wings have the same floor plan. Your room is this way, Shikisama. Hisui climbs up a flight of stairs. It seems my room is on the second floor. Come to think of it, the servants' room should be on the first floor of the, of the west wing, so that's probably where Hisui and Kohaku-san's rooms are. Outside, the sun has already set. The girl in the maid uniform walks down the do uh, walks down the long, dimly lit hallway without a word. It kind of feels like a wonderland. Without thinking, I let my thoughts slip out. Did you say something, Shiki-sama? Hisui stops and looks back at me. Uh, uh, no, I'm just talking to myself. Don't worry about it. After staring at me, Hisui bows and starts walking again. Is this my room? Yes. If you are displeased with it, I can arrange a different one for you. Uh, no. There's no way I could be displeased with it. It's... It's just a little... No. Really too fancy for me. Shiki-sama? Uh, it's fine. I'll gladly use this room. Understood. This room has not been touched since eight years ago. What was that noise? He invited me to play Blaze Blue. Hold on. I, it was a steam invite. That was the, that that was what the noise was. Sorry about that. Um, this room has not been touched since eight years ago, so I do not believe you'll find anything unsatisfactory with it. There's something a little odd about the way Hisui said that. It's as if she was implying this was once my room. Hey. Is this by any chance my old room? That is what I've been told. Am I mistaken? 
Kisui inclines her head to the side slightly. I feel relieved. It seems this girl can express emotion after all. Well, it might be now that you mention it. I do remember it faintly, so it must be so. I can't feel any sense of familiarity about this place at all. But I guess that's what it would uh but I guess that's what it's like after you leave a place for 8 years. I can't get settled here though. I was living in a six and a half math sized room until this morning. It's like I'm staying at some high class hotel. I understand how you feel, but please try to get used to it. From today onward, you are the eldest son of the Tono house, Shiki sama. You're right. I've got to do my best so I can at least look like it on the outside. With a thump, I drop my bag on the table and stretch my back. I've been feeling a little stressed out with everything that's happened so far. But I guess I have no choice but to adjust from today onwards. Shiki-sama, all your luggage has been brought out here. Is there anything more you require? No, not really. Why do you ask? There was very little delivered. If there's anything you need, I can have it prepared. So please do not hesitate to ask. I see. No. I don't need any uh I don't need anything more for now. I didn't have much luggage to begin with. My luggage is just this bag, these glasses and the textbooks in my bag, and the white ribbon with an ident uh with an unidentified owner. That's all. Ah. Uh, that's right. I haven't asked her the important thing yet. Can I ask you something, Hisui? Yes. What is it, Chiki sama Um I'm sorry if I'm mistaken about this, but you and Kohaku-san are sisters, right? For an instant, surprise flashes in Hisui's expressionless eyes. Yes. Kohaku is my older sister. Really? Great. Then that means you two must be the girls who once lived here. I'm so happy that I inadvertently raised my voice. In direct contrast to my joy, Hisui does not move. Hisui? You and Kohaku-san were children taken in here, aren't you? I'm sorry. You and Kohaku were the children taken in here, weren't you? We used to play together. I wonder if you remember. I close my mouth as soon as I speak. No. The girl I had played with together was bright and cheerful. The one who gazed at us with the cold eyes has to be. Um, I played with your sister quite often. Kisui? Yes, I know. Two years before you went to the Arima household, Makihisa-sama took Nesan and I. Uh, took in Nesan and I. Hisui speaks as if disinterested. It's good to know how... He, uh, it's good that I know Hisui and Kohaku-san are the twins from my memories, but it seems Hisui doesn't think much of it. I see. I didn't talk to you much. I'm sorry for getting so worked up. You have nothing to apologize for, Shiki-sama. I must also apologize for my rudeness to you when I was younger. Hisui lowers her head. I feel really uneasy. I know Hisui doesn't mean to make me feel bad. But I don't know how to respond when a girl the same age as me says that to me. Do you have any other requests, Shiki-sama? Uh, no. Nothing in particular. Very well. I shall come and, uh, I shall come to call you in an hour's time. Please relax until then. As I expected, Hisui says everything with an expressionless face. By one hour later, she must mean dinner. But even if she tells me to relax, how would I do that here? The clock says it's around six o'clock. Usually, I'd be watching TV uh, in the sitting room around this time. But I'm having serious doubts as to whether or not there's any such thing in this mansion. Hisui? I know it's kind of a trivial thing to ask about, but is there a television in the mansion? A television? Hisui's eyes narrow slightly. I know I'm the one who asked, but 
It really is a stupid question. I feel there's something wrong with asking about the presence of a TV in a luxurious mansion like this. Hisui makes a rare, troubled face and stares off into space. There is no television in the sitting room. Some of the visitors did make use of one, but when they departed, they packed up with their luggage and took it back with them, so I do not believe there are any remaining. Hold on. Visitors? Like who? For how long? Relatives. The eldest son of the uh, Kugamine from a branch of the family, Tozaki-sama's third daughter and her fiancé, and Kishima's eldest son came to stay for close to three years. Three years, huh? Hisui. That's what you'd call freeloaders, not visitors. Hisui does not reply. No matter what kind of people these freeloaders were, it seems that servants can't say anything bad about them. Well, at any rate, it seems like those relatives have brought and taken back their own luggage with them. My old man hated the products of modern culture, thinking them all vulgar. There was no way he would ever watch a TV. Akiha, who had been educated uh, by him for the last eight years, probably feels the same. Well, it's not like I'll die without one. Hisui is silent. Like a perfect example for servants, Hisui says nothing unless she is asked a direct question. That is, of course, kind of depressing for me. I want to make that expressionless phrase break into a smile somehow. But that seems impossible with just any old half-hearted effort. Oh, there was a library on the first floor of the east uh, of the west wing, wasn't there? Maybe I'll go find something to read if I have some free time. Hisui does not reply. She just stands in the doorway. I can't even tell where she's looking. Hisui? Hisui doesn't say a word. Suddenly, she looks straight at me. I believe there's one in Nason's room. Huh? I have no idea what she's talking about. Uh, there's one of what? A television. I remember seeing one in Nason's room. Hisui says, as if remembering something from many years ago. I see. Kohaku-san does look like the type of person who'd watch those variety shows. But I balk at going to Kohaku-san's room to tell her let me watch her TV. Sorry. I just forget I ever asked. After all, I'll be living here from now on, so I've got to follow the rules of the mansion. God knows what sort of cynical comment I'd be in from Akiha if I started watching television. It seems I'll be leading a scholarly student life fit for a member of the Tono family from now on. All right. I'll be in my room until dinner, so just come and call me when it's time. You've got other things to do, don't you, Hisui? Hisui nods in assent and turns around. Silently opening the door, she leaves the room. Dinner takes place with Akiha and I face to face. I guess it's natural here, as Hisui and Kohaku-san do not eat with us, standing behind to tend to our needs. I thought it would be natural for all four of us uh, for all four of us to eat together, so you could say I'm caught off guard by this inexplicably tense dinner. I should mention at this point that I've totally forgotten anything related to table manners by now. Well, I do remember little pieces, so it's not like I'm a, uh, it's not like I'm a complete amateur, but humans tend to pack away unused memories into the corners of their mind. The tension was actually quite thrilling with every one of my movements causing Akiha to raise an eyebrow. When I think about how I'll have to go through this every day, though, it's really depressing. Finishing dinner, I return to my room. It's still only just past eight at night. It's too early to sleep. What should I do? I'm going to save for now. Just a second. Okay.
So we are going to watch TV with Kohaku-san. Let's see. Kohaku-san's room is here, isn't it? Knock, knock. I knock on her door. Kohaku-san, are you there? Yes, please hold on for a minute. I can hear her cheerful voice from inside the room. I wait for about three minutes. Kohaku-san opens the door and pokes her head out. Oh, it's you, Shiki-sama. What are you doing here at this time? Um, well... I was wondering if you'd let me watch your TV. Huh? Kohaku-san gives me a bewildered look. Uh, well... There's no TV in this house, is there? I've been living in a normal house up until now, so it's become a daily routine for me to watch TV after dinner. I guess I can't calm down without watching it or something like that, so... The more I say it, the more I realize I'm doing something stupid. There's something not right about barging into a lady's room demanding to watch her TV. Look, even Kohaku-san is just standing there, looking bewi- Wait. No, she's not. <laughs> I guess you're right. You've been living at the Arima household up until yesterday, after all. You must think this mansion to be some kind of depressing... Uh... You must think this mansion to be some kind of depressing after moving here all of a sudden. Kohaku-san gives a cheerful laugh. Huh. Let's see. Have you talked to Akiha-sama and Hisui-chan about this yet? You mean about me coming to your room, Kohaku-san? Kohaku-san nods. Uh, no, I haven't talked to anyone about it yet. What about it? No, no, it's nothing. It's just that I would have to turn you, uh... It's just that I would have to turn you away if you had actually, uh... Fuck. It's just that I would have to turn you away if you had already talked to them about it. Smiling while she speaks, Kohaku-san looks up and down the hallway. Luckily for us, there isn't anyone around. Please hurry up and come in. It'll be troublesome if we're caught. Please, just sit anywhere. I'll go make some tea. Coughing to clear my throat, I take a seat. There are all sorts of little things in Kohaku-san's room. It might be thought of as a bit messy for a girl's room. There aren't really many things you could call cute, and what she does have is a lot of things that don't look very useful. Rather, it has an atmosphere of a room belonging to an orderly, scholarly person. Buried in the miscellaneous objects, I find the TV. On top of the table is the remote. Maybe Kohaku-san has been watching TV until just now. Thanks for waiting. Tea is fine for you, isn't it, Chiki-sama? Uh, thank you. And please don't mind me too much. Oh no, not at all. I'm sorry I can't do much to treat you. Kohaku-san says so, smiling warmly. So, the TV. What do you watch around this time, Shiki-sama? I don't have any set programs in particular, but the news is a pretty basic one. I like to hear new trends, and I like snob stories. Is that so? You seem like a very laid-back person, so I thought you'd be reading after dinner or something. <laughs> no, I don't have such refined interests. I don't consider myself laid back either, but maybe that's the impression I gave with my glasses. Oh, you wear glasses, Shiki-sama. Akiha-sama didn't say anything about that at all, so I was quite surprised when I saw you at the door. I see. I haven't met Akiha since I started to wear glasses. <laughs> These glasses are just for show. I guess you could say my eyes are bad, but I think my vision is better than that of most people. It's not that because I study too much and, uh, went near sighted or anything. Ah, oh, crap. I had an intellectual image, but I... Did, did I disappoint you? <laughs> not at all. I enjoy watching TV more than reading, too. I'm glad that you're an energetic person, just like I thought you were. Uh, yeah, thanks. I'm a little embarrassed. Faced directly with Kohaku-san's carefree smile, I can't help but feel a little nervous. Give me just a second. Um, I have my heater on because it was too cold, but now it's like way too hot. Uh, 
I'm sorry. You came to watch the news, didn't you? Gohaku-san switches the TV on. It's already nine o'clock. The news, as it usually does, reports the day's events with a little exaggeration. Oh dear, it looks like there's been another one of those serial murderers. Murders. Yeah. Gohaku-san says to herself while sitting next to me, sounding not the least bit concerned. The news is running a special feature on the serial killings. The serial murders, which began in the neighboring town, are now beginning to be concentrated within its uh, within this town. Okay, so... The vampiric serial killings were happening before Roa awoken. Before Roa woke up. Um, awakened. I don't know. I'm stupid. Um... So, capital S Shiki was already a vamp, like at least vampiric or a vampire by then, enough to be able to turn Yubizuka into a vampire himself. Um, didn't Kohaku say something along the lines of like she manipulated Shiki into killing people, or something along those lines? Or like enough to, like to make him think he was crazy or some, some something like that. I forget exactly what she said, but I feel like she made it seem like she was partially responsible for him going out and killing people. I might be misremembering that. I don't know. So it's interesting that she's like watching it happen on the news. It's a pretty simple story. Late at night. He attacks young girls indiscriminately, and in the end, he drains their blood. It seems like last night's victim is the ninth one so far. I wonder what the police are doing about it. Uh, I hope that's Kohaku talking. Who knows? It would seem pretty easy to catch a murderer who comes out at, who only comes out at night. But maybe he's really careful so they can't trace him. You could be right. The clues about murderers build up as they kill more people. So if they haven't caught him even after nine murders, he must be really carefully prepared for the killings. No, fuck, it's the other way around. Oh well. Anyway. <laughs> A careful killer, huh? But aren't these killings spontaneous crimes? It's quite strange to think of them as being carefully prepared. You're right. If there's no evidence left at all, then maybe he's not a random killer at all. I can only think that he's got it all planned out from the start or, uh, for execution. Yeah, she gave Shiki that knife and said that Tonomaki Hisa left it for him, which was a lie. Really? I didn't even think of that. That's right. She's the one who gives him the knife. I forgot about that. Ah, I see. But then what would be the point of killing those nine girls? Are they friends of his? Acquaintances? Hmm. Probably not. If there were connections like that, then I think the police would have realized it by now. In the end, I suppose it's an incomprehensible case without motive or connections. Gohaku-san says all of this disturbing stuff with a smile. It seems she's not really worried about this case. These murders are happening right here in this town, Gohaku-san. You're a young girl and all. Aren't you a little scared? It'll be fine. I'm sorry. I'll be fine since the killer only appears late at night. If I don't go out at night, I won't run into him. Kohaku-san really is a clear thinker. It is perhaps a bit of a raw explanation, but I suppose that's how a mere news story uh, should be treated. Sorry for intruding on you. I'll be counting on you again the next time I feel like watching TV. Sure, I'll be waiting. Gohaku-san looks up and down the hallway. I'd like to escort you back to your room, but Hisui-chan is waiting there, so 
I'll have to say goodbye here. Okay. Good night. I had no idea bedtime at the mansion was at 10. Apparently, there's some kind of unwritten rule here that one is not to be out in the uh, out of their room after 10. It's still so formal here, even with the old man gone. Well, I guess it's only natural. I'm also getting tired from my unfamiliarity with this mansion, so I obediently returned to my room. Ugh. When I return to my room, my bed has been made. Did he sweet do it while I was away? I'm glad she did, but it's really more than I deserve. I scratch my cheek. Then, are you there, Shiki-sama? I can hear Hisui's voice along with a knock at the door. Yeah, I'm here. Come in. Excuse me. Good evening. Thanks for making my bed, Hisui. Hisui quietly nods in acceptance. Ugh. Just as I thought. I'm not used to this. Uh, is there anything else you want to tell me? No, nothing from me. But Akihasama has instructed uh, Akihasama has instructed me to answer any questions you may have. I see. There are many things I want to ask, but I'll probably get to know them as I continue to live here. Yeah. What I want to know right now before I sleep is, is it true that there's a curfew here at seven? Yes. The main gate is locked at 7, and all the entrances to the mansion are to be locked at 8. It is also a rule that one must uh, try not going... Excuse me. It is also a rule that one must try not to go walking around in the mansion after 10. Not even walking around in the mansion? Well, I've got no complaint with that. But isn't that kind of harsh? Akiha and I are children, so I don't think you have to go that far. Indeed. It is a rule, however, so please abide by it. You are aware of the recent disturbances at night, are you not, Shiki-sama? Yeah, that vampire thing Arihiko was talking about. Well, as long as something like that is happening, I guess it's better to be safe than sorry. What else? Oh, do you mind if I ask an off-topic question? Yes, what is it? I'd like to know what kind of work you and Kohaku-san do around here. I am here to serve Shiki-sama's needs, and my sister Kohaku to serve Lady Akiha-sama. In our spare time, we do the maintenance chores around the mansion. Is there anything more you would like to know? To serve? So that's what it is after all. My shoulders suddenly feel heavier. It seemed completely natural to Akiha when she said it, but I'm nothing more than a normal high school student. I've no interest in having a girl around me, uh, around my age serving me, at least not for now. By serving me, you mean you're a personal servant? Yes. Please do not hesitate to ask anything of me. Well, I get it. Going by how Akiha was about you, uh, going by how Akiha was talking about you, it doesn't seem like I can dismiss you, so I'll just obediently let you serve me. Is there anything in particular you would like? Uh, nothing in particular, but could you stop calling me Shiki-sama? To be honest, I get chills down my back when I hear it. But Shiki-sama, you are my master. That's what I'm saying I hate. I've been living a normal life up until yesterday. I've no desire to start living a life where a girl my age addresses me with Sama. I see. Hisui's response was less than enthusiastic. Just call me, uh, just call me Shiki, and in exchange, I'll call you Hisui. Let's do away with the formalities and be more casual with each other. Still expressionless, Hisui lowers her eyebrows, as if she's being troubled. But you are my employer. It's not like I'm hiring you. You're the one doing the things I can't, so you're the great one. I see. Hisui gives another unenthusiastic reply. 
It looks like I won't be able to talk to her into uh, it looks like I won't be able to talk her into it in just one day. Anyhow, that's how it is. Don't be so formal toward me. I'll be grateful if you tell that to your sister Kohaku-san, too. Very well. As you say, Shiki-sama. Expressionless, Hisui bows her head. She completely failed to understand. I will be leaving now. Please rest now for tonight. Bowing, Hisui puts her hand uh, on the doorknob. Oh, I forgot to ask something. Uh, hold on for a second. Running toward her, I put my hand on Hisui's shoulder before she leaves. In an instant, Hisui's arm pushes away my arm with an incredible momentum. With a whack, she slaps my hand and uh, she slaps my hand away and leaps back. Uh. It's so sudden. It's the only thing I can say. Hisui is expressionless, but she glares at me fiercely. Uh, did I do something wrong? Uh. I am very sorry. She sounds very nervous. I'm not used to being touched. Please forgive me. Hisui's shoulders are faintly trembling. I feel like I just did something really terrible. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I apologize without thinking. I don't understand why myself. I just feel sorry for Hisui and I lower my head. Hisui says nothing. I get the feeling her stare is calm again. You have nothing to apologize for, Shiki-sama. I am the one to blame. No. Well, maybe, but I just... I scratch my head. Hisui stares at me, pausing only to blink for a second. Um, what was it you wanted to ask me, Shiki-sama? That's right. I stopped her because I wanted to ask her something. Oh, I wanted to ask about Akiha. Doesn't she go to a boarding school? That was only during middle school, Shiki-sama. From this year onwards, Akiha-sama has a special permission to attend a school from home. Oh, you mean she goes to school from here? Yes, but it is uncommon for her to come home from, uh, before dusk like today. Akiha-sama has practiced up until dinner, so she's always home before seven. Practice? I practice what? Today is Thursday, so she would have violin practice. Ugh. Usually, she's able to return before dinner on weekdays. So if you have anything to uh, if you have anything to say to Akiyasama, please let Nason know uh, after dinner. Hisui bows to say goodbye and leaves the room. Violin practice. What on earth is that? She's not some upper-class lady or anything, so why should she have to do something so bothersome as... Oh, wait. She is an upper-class lady. Yes. Come to think of it, my sister, Tono Akiha, is a natural-born upper-class lady. In my memories, she was always the obedient, ever-uneasy sister who'd always follow me around. As a child, Akiha was always quiet never having even the courage to express her own desires. She was a frail girl who would always live in fear of a scolding from our father. Yeah, people really do change after eight years. After eight years, I've become the me I am now. Akiha has become the Akiha of right now, too. Eight years is a long time. It's half our lives up until now. I was absent from this mansion during that vital period where a child becomes an adult. I'm sorry, Akiha. I think things would have been better if I had been with her during those eight years. I unconsciously mumble an apology. Left by myself, I lie on my bed. This house from eight years ago. My blood relative from eight years ago. It feels like they belong to someone else. I wonder what's going to happen to me now. Grumbling to no one in particular, I fall asleep. I hear the wave-like sound of someone's voice, of something's voice. 
Something is howling. It's too sharp and high-pitched to be a stray dog. It echoes in my eardrums. Is it howling at the moon? This doesn't feel right. The beastly howling is beginning to give me a headache. It doesn't stop. Ugh, just shut up already! I wake up. I can hear the sound of a dog barking outside the window. The clock indicates it's just past eleven. This is more than just a neighborhood nuisance. Damn, I can't sleep like this. The dog's howling comes from somewhere near the mansion's fence. It doesn't seem like I can go back to sleep at this rate. No, come on, go to sleep. Don't be a bitch. The howling continues. There's no way I can sleep like this. I can't sleep, but that's just normal. I'm sleepy, so I'll pass. Pulling the sheets over me, I stretch out on the bed. I could just think of the howling as the sound of something mundane, like cars driving by on the street. <sighs> Today's been a very long day. I'm mentally tired from eating dinner in this unfamiliar mansion, and my conversations with Akia and everyone else. After all that... The howling is just background noise. I close my eyes and gently fall asleep. <sighs> I think I just heard something. Half awake, I look at the clock. It's just past two. It's been about two hours since I heard the dogs howling. The dogs howling has already stopped. The mansion is so quiet, I can hear the clock ticking in the silence. I hear it again. Inside the mansion. From the lobby? <laughs> Could it be a burglar? It's not impossible. The mansion's contents are outrageously valuable. On top of that, with no one here now except Kohaku-san, Hisui, Akiha, and myself, it's very insecure. I get out of bed and slip out of the room quietly. If it's a burglar, Akiha and everyone will be in danger, so I can't let this one go. I'll just look down from the second floor into the lobby. That should be safe enough. There's nothing wrong there. <laughs> no, someone's there. The figure that enters from the entrance is... Akiha? She's not going to her own room on the second floor, but to the first floor of the West Wing. The only things there are Kohaku-san's room, and my old man's room. What is she doing at this time of night? I can murmur all I want, but there won't be any answers forthcoming. After gazing at the lobby for a while, I decide to return to my room. Well... She probably had something to do, or went to see Kohaku-san. I feel bad about sneaking around and watching her, and I don't want to just ask her about everything she does. Sleep, sleep. There's school tomorrow. I bury myself in my bed and close my eyes. As I fall asleep, my thoughts keep returning over and over to Akiha's hollow-eyed figure in the lobby, and how something seemed wrong. Oh, God. I forgot how long Chapter 1 was if you don't skip half of it. <laughs> Holy tamole. That was almost half... That was almost three hours in and of itself. Ugh. Alrighty. So, we are gonna... I honestly was not expecting to go that long tonight. I was planning to really only do like an hour, an hour and a half, but... Looks like we went almost three hours. Alright. Um, so, we're gonna stop for tonight. Um, so let's save. So, I feel like, maybe I'm remembering incorrectly, but I think that the Hisui route didn't feature that Akiha cutscene, um, but the Akiha route did. So now it's back. 
So I guess that means that whole situation is relevant again. Uh, so that's interesting. Um, with the exception of a couple lines, that was basically exactly the same as previous routes all the way through. The only thing that's different is kind of certain things that uh, Kohaku says are a little bit more recontextualized now that I know everything about her. Um, so I'm assuming we're going to do the Yumizuka fight again. So it's possible that it's going to be a, a bit of a while before we get to uh, like more original stuff. Um, so yeah, that's fine. This is the last one, right? So it's the last hurrah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So thank you everybody who was watching. Uh, thank you, Inu. Thank you, Eddie, for being in the chat. I always appreciate people, uh, giving me feedback and stuff. Uh, if you're watching the VOD, thank you for making it up, uh, making it this far. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash berserkchip. That's berserkchip with two Ps because I forgot the password in my previous account. Follow me on Twitter for uh, fighting game videos, funny stuff, and uh, highlights of uh, previous streams, as well as updates on the schedule and when I stream. Um, I try to stream every Monday and Wednesday, although like I've been kind of spotty about it lately, but I'm trying to get back on schedule because everything's kind of finally falling to normal, so that's really cool. Uh, we will be continuing Tsukihime. We're on the final route. Yay. Um, and when we finish, who knows what the hell I'm going to do. Um, I did a poll. Everybody said they want to do, they want to see Fates Day Night. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, cause I did another poll that said everybody wants to see Blaze Blue and a sick of visual novels. But if I, when I look at my Streamlab, uh, analytics, uh, my visual novel streams do way better than my Blaze Blue streams. Uh, so we'll see about that. All the people who voted decided to not show the fuck up. <laughs> um, but uh, I will be doing another Blaze Blue stream uh, in a few minutes from now uh, while I warm up for a tournament that I've entered, which will be happening tomorrow. I may stream uh, my bracket run of that. So that might be fun. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we will see you next time. And if you want to see some Blaze Blue stuff, I guess I'll see you in a little bit.